So I hear you want to learn how to grow your own food. If that's the case, you're in the right channel. Hi, my name is Lisette Garcia and I am a fifth year flower and vegetable farmer located in Central Valley, California, Zone 9B. And in this series, I'm going to teach you everything that I've learned and all the knowledge that I have so that you can start growing your own stuff at home. So if that's something that's interesting to you, then keep on watching. So let's begin our first class in how I start to grow and when to grow our seeds here at the farm. We are in mid-January and right now I have already organized myself to the point where I know what seeds I'm going to start growing right now in late spring and then early summer. I skip midsummer. I don't grow anything then and then I follow up with fall planting and then winter planting. So as you can tell, I've already organized the entire year and that is something that I would recommend for you to do and that only happens after you know what you're gonna plant. So step number one, what are you gonna grow? You have to look into what you're gonna grow because then that will tell you when you need to plant it. So step number two is to make your list. That way you keep organized, like we said, for step one. And the reasoning for that is so that you can start categorizing everything that you want to see in your garden by season, because then we can backtrack. Okay, so if I want it for this season because it grows well during this time of year, when do I actually need to start so that I can actually get a harvest when it is the perfect time for that plant? So let me explain why I'm uh, being so adamant about organization. Um, the more you organize right now, the easier it'll be in the long term, and then it'll be easier for you to learn what time of year each crop will do well. So for example, let's say now we can categorize your crops that you've made from the list um, between summer and then winter. So there's specific things that only do well in the summertime, like tomatoes, cucumbers, peppers, and there's things that do way better in the wintertime. So that can include radishes, spinach, uh, lettuce, and other leafy greens. So that is why I want you to make a list and then from there we'll see okay these vegetables according to like a google search um, will grow in temperatures that range between uh, 65 and 75 degrees or me maybe even higher than that and when does that happen typically during the summertime but let's say that the plant requires uh, the time of year to be cool so then you're like okay great so now i can't grow this in the summertime because the packet says that it grows way better during cool season of the year, which typically here in our area happens um, after November. So that is why I want you to categorize things depending on like the time of year that they do well. And then that information you can easily Google search. And if not, a lot of times that information is already included in the seed packet that you purchase. So after we've determined what we're going to grow and then we've categorized what time of year they grow best then we can start talking about materials that you'll actually use uh, definitely something to put your seeds or your starts your little plants in um, these are trays that i've purchased for bigger production but don't feel pressured to do so much you can literally start in a recycled pot from previous plants that you've um, used i'm um, sorry that you've purchased you can do milk jugs you can do little little cups there's so many containers that you can use honestly that's where you can have like the freedom of creativity um, as long as you have like a space where they can get enough sunlight and then that you can place them in a space where you won't forget to water them then that is something that's super important and then the soil that you'll start them with so I use potting soil that I buy from my local hardware store. This is to start off seeds, but other than that, if plants already come in something, then now you have to determine what space requirements they need. If it's gonna be a plant that's gonna take up a lot of space, then make sure you have space in your garden, in your property to allocate to this plant. Otherwise, it'll probably stay a little smaller than the, it normally would or to the potential that it has. Um, 
I start them here and then I transplant them into the ground but for that I also organize myself here at the farm so that I have pretty much a picture of like where I'm going to plant all of these plants that I'm going to have in the future in coming months so make sure that you have the trays and space for everything that you're going to grow. So we've gone through a lot of information from making a list, getting organized, categorizing your crops, then also the materials, the spacing requirements. Now we have to touch on sunlight. There's crops that will need a lot of sun. There's crops that won't need that much sun. So part shade, part sun. And all of that gets determined as we continue to specify what crops we're gonna grow. And also a lot of information is contained in the seed packet. So always pay attention to that. And if not, Google is your best friend. Um, after that, the final thing would be to consider what type of watering the plants will require and that is going to also differ. Right now the information is very vague, I know, but this is how we're going to slowly start to become more knowledgeable about specific crops so that we do well on everything. And I'm going to walk you through all that. We have finished for today's first lesson, if you will, but I'm going to keep making videos so that you get to see very specific crops getting planted, such as sunflowers, which I just did. And then if you have any specific crops that you want me to touch on, please leave them down in the comments. But yeah, with that, I'm going to leave you and we will see each other in the next video. Bye.